Hello, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about what is better for you to be investing in real estate and property, or are you better to be investing in equities or stocks and shares? So in this video, I am going to try and pack in as much as I possibly can. I'm covering everything from liquidity to yield to government intervention and lots, lots more. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please keep watching. I wanted to say that this is certainly not a cut and dry topic. Investing in property might be right for you or investing in the stock market might be right for you or a combination of both of them. I just wanted to cover some different points that might be worth considering before you make your decision. So the first one is diversity. So when you are investing in the stock market, you could buy something as simple as Vanguard's FTSE All World, which is VWRL, which means that you would be invested in a basket of over 3,800 different stocks very, very simply with low fees. So when you're investing in the stock market, you can invest in things like ETFs, which give you a huge range of global diversity very, very quickly and for very low costs. Whereas when you're investing in property, that can be much, much harder. Obviously, property is very, very expensive and you need a good amount of money to be able to invest in. So I'm pretty sure, I mean, I personally couldn't do this, that it might be very difficult to have a very globally diverse portfolio, not only because that would be very, very expensive, but also because you would need to really understand the property market abroad and globally to invest in that way. So probably if you're just starting up, say for example, a buy to let portfolio, then you might just be investing in one property and perhaps not investing globally. So obviously your property portfolio is going to be less diverse than your investment portfolio could potentially be. And diversity does tend to lower risk because obviously you're spreading your investments much further than you would be in a single property. Okay, so the next points that we're gonna cover all fall into a kind of pricing and borrowing section for property and then also for investing in stocks and shares. So the first one is borrowing. It is very, very difficult here in the UK to borrow money when your sole purpose for that is to invest in the stock market. It just really is very difficult or not available at all. Whereas borrowing for a mortgage is a really, really standard thing to do here in the UK, whether that be for your own first property, which is something that I did and got out of mortgage, um, with my husband to buy our first property, um, or whether it's for a buy to let property, there are also mortgages available to do that. So borrowing is much more simple if you are looking to invest in property than it would be if you were looking to invest in equities or the stock market. Moving on now to the initial investment required. So if you are investing in property, it's brilliant because as I said, you're more likely to be able to borrow money to invest in that property. However, usually here in the UK, you will need some sort of deposit and that deposit could run into the thousands. You would need thousands of pounds for your deposit. You would also need thousands of pounds for legal fees and stamp duty probably here in the UK, depending on where you're buying and where you fall within those stamp duty thresholds. Whereas with the stock market, you really don't need to have thousands of pounds to invest. It has got so, so much easier to invest in the stock market now, particularly with platforms that have been released that have no commission charges or platforms that are available on apps and things like that. So there's no longer that barrier to having to have thousands of pounds to invest. So previously with different platforms, you might have to invest at least 500 pounds, whereas there are platforms available out there where you can invest for as little as a pound and you can set up a regular investment for say 10 or 25 pounds a month. So it means that you can take advantage of making your money work for you, but you don't have to have thousands of pounds to do it. So you can make your money, make you more money, without having thousands of pounds to start with, which is really, really exciting. So obviously here in the UK, there are things like help to buy schemes, which will obviously help you to buy a property. There are, however, not help to buy share schemes. So there is a real focus here in the UK from the government on helping people to buy property. So there is that government intervention and that government help to buy things like property, which keeps property prices bolstered, particularly for things like new builds, whereas there isn't the same help to buy for shares and then also equities as well. 
Obviously, it's understandable why this is the case, but I thought it was a really important point to mention. So when you are investing in the stock market, your costs are really, really clearly laid out. So it might be that there is a 0.2% fee on an exchange traded fund that you want to invest in. So you are clear how much it is going to cost you. Also on lots of the different platforms, they will break down how much that specific investment will cost you over one to five years. You're also going to be aware of any platform fees that you will need to pay. So it's very transparent when you're trying to understand costs for investing in the stock market. However, with investing in property, it is slightly less clear, just because obviously there is bricks and mortar and things can go wrong. So you might have unforeseen costs that you haven't potentially budgeted for. So things like a leaking roof, a broken boiler, those are things that you potentially can't foresee. Also, if you have particularly bad tenants that do any damage to any buy to let properties that you might have, that will take away from the profits that you've made. And it's not a cost that you could have budgeted quite as clearly as you could have if you were investing in the stock market. Okay, moving on to tax now. So the advantage of investing in the stock market is that here in the UK, you can invest in a tax efficient way and put your investments into something like an investment or stocks and shares ISA, which is essentially a wrapper, which means that you don't pay any tax on the gains that you make. You're allowed to put 20,000 pounds into an investment ISA every single year and you do not pay tax on any gains whereas there isn't that same allowance for second homes okay so moving on now to yield this is one where property does seem to do better so on average the yield from an investment property does tend to be higher than it would be from stocks and shares this is just on average and obviously there are so many factors to take into consideration for example your yield will be very different depending on where you are buying the property in the uk or obviously abroad and also the dividend yield that you might see from investing in the stock market might be very different depending on the different companies that you decide to invest in. So generally, on average, property yield does tend to be higher than the yield you would get from dividends in the stock market. However, there are so many different factors at play here that, to be honest, it's probably quite close. So this is something that would be very individual to your own property portfolio or your own investment portfolio. So yield does tend to be higher, as I said, for a property portfolio, but it's very dependent on where you are geographically um, and many other factors. So, okay, so now moving on to liquidity. So how liquid is your investment? So with investing in houses or property, they can be quite illiquid. So particularly in a downturn, it might be very, very difficult to try and sell your property investment and it might take months or years. However, when times are hard, you can still choose to sell your equity investments. So whether you're invested in different funds, trusts, ETFs or individual stocks and shares, you can generally go ahead and sell those very, very quickly. And you can have your money within a matter of hours or days rather than potentially months or years. So when times are hard, it might be very difficult to sell a property, but it is much easier to sell stocks and shares. However, arguably on a downturn, you don't really wanna be selling your property and you probably don't wanna be selling your stocks and shares if they are on the down, you probably want to keep holding onto them. So. Obviously, if you are investing in property or also in stocks and shares, it's very, very helpful to have some kind of emergency fund set aside so that you do not have to sell your investment property or your stocks and shares on a downturn. But if you are interested in liquidity, then obviously stocks and shares are more liquid than an investment property would be. And then on to my final point, which is the psychology of owning a property. Now, the one thing that I would say is a massive benefit to being invested in property is that psychologically it can feel very, very rewarding. So whether it's owning your own home or bricks and mortar as a buy to let property, owning that physical bricks and mortar feels really tangible and less abstract than owning stocks and shares that you log into on a computer and see, actually being able to physically see property 
For me personally, I would find that more psychologically rewarding, if that makes sense. Um, so for me personally, the only investment that I have in property is my own personal house. So the house that I bought with my husband, the house that I'm in now. Um, and it took us years and years and years to be able to save a deposit for this house. And with buy-to-let properties, I don't own any buy-to-let properties, but I imagine with buy-to-let properties and being a landlord, being able to have bricks and mortar and a home for somebody that is warm and safe and that you know that you are taking good care of that home and giving someone somewhere to live, obviously they're paying you for it, but I think that's a really positive thing. And as I said, feels much less abstract than investing in the stock market. So to be perfectly honest, there are real benefits to investing in both property and also investing into different stocks and shares. Now on this channel, I predominantly talk about investing into different stocks and shares, ETFs and funds and trusts, because that is what I am personally passionate about. I don't have any real estate investments beyond the house that I'm currently living in. And then I also recently bought a couple of real estate investment trusts, um, which are sometimes shortened to REITs, um, and they hold a basket of industrial real estate investments. But I bought a very small amount and I might be adding a few more to my portfolio and upping the value on those. But they are the only property investments that I currently have. It might be an area in the future that I do more investing in, but at the moment, my focus will remain on investing in the stock market. So for me personally, I will continue to invest in the stock market, invest in funds, trusts and ETFs. And in the future, I may invest in an investment property. But to be honest, I've got a lot of money to save before I do that. And I have an awareness that that will take probably much more effort. And as I said, much more money to do that than simply investing in the stock market. So for now, this channel will stick with being an investing channel. Let me know if you have any questions down below or let me know if you are invested in any buy to let properties. I'd be really interested to hear how they're going for you, how your property investments are going. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and have a really lovely day. Bye bye.